are beefsteak fungus. Now, when I did that article about, when I wrote the article about the 10 safest fungus, this was in there at number four or five, I can't remember. Really, really easy to identify. No toxic lookalikes whatsoever. Very common in Britain, and totally edible. Unfortunately, it's not the tastiest mushroom in the world as far as I'm concerned, but we've all got our own taste buds. Some people like it a lot more than I do. So we've got, our youngish one there. We've got a very, very rotten old one here, looking like a slab of steak. A little bit like a slab of steak, rather. <laughs> and uh, there's a couple more around the back, but now I'll, I'll come back up and we'll talk, talk about this. Oh, look, yeah, there's another lovely youngster under there. Uh, right, there's two trees that the beefsteak fungus grows on, oak and chestnut. This, I believe, is probably, well, it'd be a very, very big oak. He's chestnut. He's chestnut. You can see by the bark that's left on him down there, the crosshatch bark okay. um, means you've got a chestnut. And quite often you'll see that the bark kind of spirals around the trunk. Yeah. Um, just from that little bit down there. I'm kind of guessing, but it's what it looks like to me. And chestnuts tend to grow these giant wide trunks out of uh, all the trees we get in the UK. Chestnuts can be some of the most magnificent. Now, what we've got under here is a sort of middle-aged one. I'm going to cut half of him off and we'll put him in the meal. But like I say, he's not the tastiest mushroom as far as I'm concerned. He'll be one that you'll be able to pick out amongst the other mushrooms that we've found today because they've got a slightly sort of fruity or even acidic side to the flavour. So whenever I cook a beefsteak fungus, I'll cook it with something creamy or people have said to me that they've soaked it overnight in bicarb of soda before they've cooked it, just to kind of get rid of a bit of that acidity. All I do is I, like I say, cook it with a nice creamy sauce and it's okay. I do know other people that do... <laughs> what are you doing there? <laughs> there was a face at the top of some... Where'd you come from? <laughs> <laughs> you popping up behind trees again, James? I'm gonna, uh, yeah, sure. There's another big one right here. It looks like a melon. They're all edible if you want to take one home and take it to one of your chefs, James. And... See if they can make something nice out of it. I'd be very, very pleased to find out because for me, there's only one thing that I really like doing with this, and that's like I say, cooking it with a, a creamy sauce. What's its texture? Is it quite hard? Is it? Do you quite... want to find out? It's one that oh, you can eat it. a little bit raw. Mm -hmm. So some people like I know tuna, it? Mm. make beefsteak carpaccios out of it. Would you like a taste? Yeah, mm. Mm. Oh, it's, oh, and it's it's wet. Yeah. Now. As you can see, cut through it. You're saying it looks like a bit of tuna. The reason it gets the beef, the name beefsteak fungus is because when it matures, this is quite big for a young, mm. fresh one, mm. but when it matures, it goes much more like that and redder, as you can see there, actually. See what's happening yeah. just mm. there? Yeah. You can see that. He's gone much redder, so that's what it would be like on a more mature specimen. Mm -hmm. It's got like a tongue texture on the thing. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that gives tongue. it its other name, ox tongue. Oh, yeah. oh, okay. Ox tongue yeah, yeah, fungus. Yeah, yeah. So at this stage, for me, it looks more like an ox tongue. Mm. There you go. Yeah. You ox you, James. Oh, it uh, looks more yeah. like an ox tongue at this stage. Mm. And then it gets, as it gets older, it tends to start looking more like a bit of steak. Um, we'll leave and all the rest behind. We don't need to take any more than what we've got already. And how long does it take to get to that stage? Uh, normally it would have been on the tree for about a week okay. um, so before quite... it starts uh, going redder. But it depends right. on the environment. So these would be in. about a week? I, I couldn't tell you because it depends on what it's been like while it's been growing. This right. bit is okay. underneath here, yeah. sheltered yeah. away. Yeah. I've just taken half yeah. of it. There's lots more over on the tree there that was obviously more exposed mm. that's gone mm. redder a lot mm. quicker so nothing at all in britain fungus wise looks like this it's a very safe mushroom anything polypore that's soft and malleable that when you cut through it looks like potentially a bit of tuna yeah, or i find when they get a bit older they look more like a really marbled bit of wagyu beef 
kind of thing. Right. Um, unfortunately, they don't taste like that. That's the only <laughs> bad thing. But they're a very, very safe mushroom to forage for. And uh, yeah, I think we'll, we'll finish on this one now the rain started and go back and make some food. So scientific name, Fistulina hepatica. Nice easy one to remember. Yeah. Um, but all you need to know, beefsteak fungus or ox tongue fungus grows on uh, oak trees and chestnut trees and there is nothing else looks like mm. it full stop. What would that, what would that taste fried in butter like in just in a pan with it? I'll let you try. I'll let you have a try. Did you taste a little bit of it? Did any? Did everyone want to try? 